Maxillae, a pair of bones on either side of the middle third of the face, is formed by intramembranous bone formation, that is, bone ossifies by deposition of bone substance, over the connective tissue membrane. Maxilla is a head of mandible in growth, generally due to its more cranial location. It has the advantage of being close to the neural structures, and follows the cephalocaudal gradient of growth. Growth of maxilla, closely follows the neural growth curve, in the scamens curves. The prenatal craniofacial growth, develops in three stages. Starting with, the period of the ovum for the first two weeks, from fertilization. The period of embryo, from second to eighth week. And the period of fetus, from the ninth week till birth. The tissues of the face, both hard and soft tissues, are of neural crest cell origin. The neural crest cells, are derived from the margins of the crests of the neural folds, which is the enfolding of the neural plate. The neural crest cells, have great migration capacity, and though they are of ectodermal origin, they exhibit properties of mesenchymal tissues. They are thus called, ectomesenchyme. The neural crest cells give rise to diverse structures, both near the site of their origin, and at remote sites. In the head and neck region, the neural crest cells give rise to the facial processes, the branchial arches and their cartilages, the bone cells, for the membranous bones of the skull, ganglia of the autonomic nervous system, leptomeninges, and so on. In the early formative stages, the head of the fetus, is occupied by the developing forebrain. The head occupies, about half of the entire length of the fetus. There are surface thickenings, on the ectoderm of forebrain, that form the optic vesicles. They later form the lens play code. At around 21 days after conception, the head begins to take shape. The migrating neural crest cells, form two streams when they encounter the lens play code. The anterior stream of cells, forms the mesenchyme of the frontonasal process, and the posterior stream migrates to form the structures, of the branchial arches. Between third and eighth week of intrauterine life, most of the development of the face takes place. At around fourth week of intrauterine life, the branchial arches begin to develop. The developing forebrain, the prosencephalon, forms downward projection, called the frontonasal process, which overhangs the primitive oral cavity, or the stomadium. The stomadium at this stage is not open to the environment, but closed by a bilaminar membrane, called the buccopharyngeal or oropharyngeal membrane. This is a temporary structure, which is formed by the mucosa of the pharynx on the inside, or endoderm, and mucosa of the mouth on the outside or ectoderm. This is one of the two sites, where there is no intervening mesoderm, other site being the cloacal membrane. The buccopharyngeal membrane, ruptures at about 28th day of intrauterine life. This establishes the continuity of passage, between the mouth and pharynx. The branchial arches, developing during the late somite period, are formed from mesoderm of the ventral foregut. The mesoderm segments to form five bilateral mesenchymal swellings. There are five pairs of branchial arches, the fifth being transitory. The branchial arches, are separated by four branchial grooves, on the external aspect, and corresponding five pharyngeal pouches, on the internal aspect of the gut. The first arch is the mandibular arch, and the second arch is the hyoid arch. The jaws of the face, for example, maxilla and mandible, are derived from the first arch. In the meanwhile, the frontonasal process of the forebrain, just above the stomadium, develops bilateral thickenings, called the nasal placode. In the middle, 
there is invagination of the placode, to form nasal pits. On the both sides of the nasal pits, there are elevations, which are medial and lateral nasal processes. By about fourth week of intrauterine life, facial process arises from the first arch, which corresponds to the mandibular processes. Later the mandibular processes give two more swellings, which grow ventromedially. These are the maxillary processes. By about sixth week, the processes of the face are easily discernible. The stomadium is bound by the frontonasal process above, the mandibular process below, and the sides being occupied by the maxillary processes. The stomadium is very wide at this stage, but as the development of the various processes proceeds, it narrows and forms the mouth. The maxillary process grows ventromedially, towards the nasal processes. The maxillary process fuses with the lateral nasal process, and migrates medially to contact the infralateral side of the medial nasal process. The maxillary and the medial nasal processes are initially separated by the epithelial nasal fin, which soon degenerates, so that the mesenchyme of the two processes can fuse. The maxillary and mandibular processes fuse at the sides to form the cheek tissue. The lateral nasal process forms the ala of the nose. The medial nasal process of both sides fuses to form the globular process in the middle, which gives rise to the tip of the nose, columella, the philtrum, the labial tuberculum of the upper lip, the frenulum, and the entire primary palate. The maxillary process forms the alveolus, which bears teeth distal to the canines, and the secondary palate. The area of fusion of the maxillary and mandibular processes forms the commissures or corners of the mouth. As the two processes grow towards the fellow of opposite side, the stomadium is narrowed. The most prominent defect in the development of maxilla is the cleft lip, either unilateral or bilateral. The cleft lip is the result of the failure of the fusion of maxillary and medial nasal processes. The most common is unilateral left side cleft lip. Bilateral cleft lip produces a protuberant, free hanging middle part of the lip. The middle cleft which is theoretically due to the failure of fusion of the medial nasal processes, is exceedingly rare. The cleft lip can be complete or partial. Cleft lip or palate, and other facial clefts, develop during the period of formation of organ systems, in the stages of the craniofacial development. This approximates to about 28 to 55 days of intrauterine life. Overfusion of the maxillary and mandibular processes leads to a small mouth, called microstomia, and the opposite of this condition is macrostomia. Globular maxillary cyst is the medial cyst in the line of fusion of globular and maxillary processes. <laughs>